I'm seeing a lot of overly critical and misleading information out there in some Nino Kuni 2 reviews, so I'm taking this opportunity to clear up a couple of things for you. <laughs> Let's start with the big one. Is Nino Kuni 2 too easy? Firstly, what is too easy? I've seen comments on my own videos and some reviews point out the game is too easy, but very little evidence or clarification on what that means. Any easy game isn't automatically a bad game, and having an easy difficulty also doesn't mean it's a negative. The way I see it, the only way something can be too easy is if the easy difficulty is the result of poor player engagement or interaction. To give an example, think of a game that only requires the very minimal input to be victorious, so you can basically hold down one or two buttons the entire game and finish it with ease. That is what I would consider too easy, because the underlying mechanics for a game like this are what cause it to be easy. You don't really have to do anything to succeed. This is not what Ni no Kuni 2 is. When people are talking about it being easy, what they mean is that you are unlikely to die over and over if you are playing the game with some level of competence, and that isn't a bad thing. The combat is really fun. It requires a lot of player interaction. There are light and heavy attacks that can be comboed together, four customizable and upgradable magic skills, every character has a ranged attack, every character is equipped with three melee weapons that can be switched to take advantage of a system that buffs your skills based on the weapon's charge. You can also hold down every button to charge up your attacks, and that can be interrupted, so you need to choose when that is appropriate. There is a block button, there's a dodge button, higgledies are spread throughout the field and will prompt you to go near them and press a button to unleash a special skill, bosses have unique abilities and mechanics, there is plenty of enemy variety, and the list goes on and on. Just because, in all likelihood, you are going to kill the boss on your first attempt doesn't mean that it doesn't require your input and concentration, and it doesn't mean that it isn't fun, because it is. Not everything needs to be Dark Souls. There are also challenges to be had in the game. Some of the tainted monsters are not pushovers, and neither are the bosses, really. You won't just insta-gib them, boss battles are actually quite long, but currently the combat in place does not punish you with insta-death if you make one tiny mistake. So that's how I feel about Ni no Kuni 2 being too easy. I think that's a load of bull. The difficulty is on the easy side, but it's not due to a lack of player engagement. Combat is fun, there are plenty of mechanics, and on top of everything I've talked about, you can switch between six playable characters that all feel different in combat. You can switch out of combat and in combat. There's variety, there's engagement, and there's fun. Unless you are utterly offended by a combat system that is anything less than Dark Souls, you aren't going to have an issue. I also felt that the current difficulty lent itself to the game flowing more smoothly. I don't want to die 200 times to a boss requiring me to go and out-level it, which has done nothing but accomplish my complete disconnect from the story. And speaking of story, that is what I wanted to talk about next. I'm not going to give any major spoilers, and I'll be talking in generalities for the most part, but I do need to give a small detail here and there to give a counterpoint to some of the things I've read. So if you don't want to know anything at all about the story, feel free to close the video now. One thing I've heard mentioned, which has now been circulated a couple of times in various places, is that the story is about world domination and that King Evan is a hypocrite. These comments are the strangest thing for me to wrap my head around because I did not get this impression at all in the Nino Kuni 2 I played. First of all, is the story about world domination? A couple of reviewers have claimed that King Evan essentially wants to take over the world and have complete control which is just a load of crap. The only thing King Evan wants other nations to do is sign a peace treaty to prevent war. That is literally it. He doesn't want control over their country. He doesn't want to siphon their resources. He doesn't want to change the way they live. All he wants is a signature on a treaty that is basically a commitment to not wage war on other nations. I have literally no idea how that equates to world domination in any way. It's almost as if some reviewers completely ignored the story at hand and just made up their own, because it isn't even mistakenly suggested that King Evan is after any more than this. He wants to build his own kingdom where everyone can be happy and for there to be world peace. Those are pretty good intentions in my books. 
The other thing I've seen said is that Evan is a hypocrite. He says he wants world peace and to end war, but he wages war all the time, or he kills people, etc, etc. This is also a load of crap. At no point in the game does Evan rock up to another nation with an army behind his back to force a signature on the treaty, and the only times you do fight are against monsters or the main antagonist. When you arrive in some nations, there is fishy business going on, which is obvious right from the outset, and you try and figure out what that is, and in almost all scenarios, you successfully restore nations to their former glory, or remove the current blight they're under before achieving their leader's signature on the treaty. Honestly, I don't know what to think about some of the people who see this story as being about tyranny and hypocrisy. I'm pretty sure they are making up their own story instead of just experiencing the one that is actually there. On top of all that, it's a relatively light-hearted, kid-friendly, and charming anime story. People are taking it way more seriously than it's intended. Not to say that it isn't serious, but it is not uh, about tyranny and that kind of insane level of seriousness. And that about wraps it up. I wanted to make this video because I've been bombarded with questions about it all, the difficulty in particular, and I just wanted to clear it up. I cannot recommend Nino Kuni 2 enough. I'm still having an absolute blast and I simply don't share some of the concerns that other people seem to have. So you know the drill, hit the like button if you liked the video, subscribe to see more of me and everything I do, check out the links in the video description to help support the channel, and other than that, I'll see you all soon.